Welcome to SC24, the supercomputing conference in Atlanta, Georgia. I am here at the Dell Technologies presence here at SC24. And the reason why that's important is because in the era of AI, it's important to have choices. And Dell has always been, if you will, the Switzerland uh, of IT choice. Sometimes certain technologies get dominated by one player or another. Dell has always held strong on the idea that its customers ultimately drive choice. I have two fantastic guests to talk about this very subject today. Manya from Dell Technologies, welcome Manya. Thank you. And Steen from Metrum AI. Great to be here. Welcome both. Uh, I understand that, Manya, you've been working on something pretty special with a certain GPU from a certain company. Tell us about it. Of course, so I mean, we are excited to talk about XC9680 server, Dell PowerEdge server, which is the ultimate AI server in the industry right now. With uh, the plan for silicon diversity from Dell, um, we are now offering this XC9680 with Gaudi 3 from Intel. So it's already like available as a restricted RDS to some customers for testing. Uh, but come December, it's going to be available to everyone and it's ready to ship. Um, and just, yeah, super excited to get this offering in the market. So Manya can say that the XC9680 with Gaudi is cool because she's part of Dell Technologies. You're with Metrum AI, so you're a bit of a third party uh, objective observer. What, what say you, Steen, on the subject of Gaudi and, and you know, what you're seeing so far? Yeah, innovation today is GPU constrained or you know, some companies would prefer to say AI accelerators. And I think you know, the two of those companies that would prefer to say AI accelerators also are supporting the XC9680. So what we get in the, the XC9680 is no compromise solution where we end up you know, with you know, the industry leader and then we've got choice among the other two AI accelerators in the market. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. So Manya, I, I, I alluded to this earlier, Dell is about customer choice. Mm -hmm. What are the challenges that you're seeing customers facing today when it comes to thinking about AI? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. And like, honestly, um, particularly with this offering with Gaudi 3, there are a few challenges that we are trying to solve. So for example, first one is of course, the choice with GPU or AI accelerator. Uh, second thing is that the customers don't have to be tied into a proprietary software or networking, which is one of the like main differentiators with Gaudi 3 from Intel, the networking, it's all uh, based on Rocky and it's from open compute. So okay. it's not proprietary. And then third thing I would say is the, uh, scale out that it offers, the scalability with the XC9680 and Gaudi 3 offering, uh, while still maintaining the cost of the whole infrastructure. So those are the some some of the great so, things. So you can obviously deliver as you're as you're referencing an XC9680 that has what eight, eight Gaudi Gaudi 3. Uh huh. Eight, there are like eight eight, eight different cards. It's called as OAM form Cush, factor. Okay. So it's uh, open compute accelerator module. Okay, in six U. Uh, in 6U, yeah. So in that cabinet though, um, can Dell also, or is Dell planning to deliver sort of rack scale infrastructure solutions based on Gaudi? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so okay. like it will scale out, you know, like you can uh, connect from starting from two nodes, four nodes, up to 16, 32, and that form factor. Ultimately, that's the scalability that we want to offer. And it's connected with the Dell Z9864F switch. Uh, with the eight OSF, six OSFP ports that it offers. Okay. So yes, all that scalability with the rack integration is part of the so, offering. So Steen, you and Metrum are known kind of colloquially as the most feared man among GPU uh, manufacturers because of your relentless pursuit of the truth when yeah. it comes to performance. What, what, but what, what, are you, what are you seeing in terms of um, relative performance from these devices? Do they make sense? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And I think um, we've had unique opportunity, you know, thanks to our tight collaboration with Dell to run a tremendous amount of code. And we've seen the evolution of, you know, new entrants into the GPU or AI accelerator market. And um, I think Gaudi 3 is up to the task of, you know, participating in this market. And, you know, Intel's made some bold claims about performance. And, you know, we're thrilled to see their software stack evolve and you know we've made a few tweaks to it ourselves, and we're seeing it reach those claims. 
And I think as Manya alluded to, it's, you know, that claim includes a TCO story as well. So it's not just performance, you know, it's a performance per cost story as well. So I think, you know, Gaudi 3 is on a great trajectory, you know, as it enters the market. I mean, we're, we're downstairs right below us is live. We're remote into Round Rock running, you know, one of the few Gaudi 3 systems in the world. We built a full agentic rag stack for internet service provider customer support agents, um, you know, and it's working fantastic. So that whole software ecosystem on top of Gaudi is, is ready to go. And especially for the AI workloads, I think, you know, as you walk around SC24, you know, we like to talk about traditional HPC as well. But from the AI stack, I think, I think we're ready to go run things like Agentic Rag and we're, you know, we're going to have a good TCO story. And it's going to be complementary of the other two players in the market as well. Okay, so you see, when you look into the future, you see choice and healthy competition among these folks. So, Manya, let's double click on that kind of performance question, uh, mm -hmm. the value question. What are, what are some of the ways that you measure how Gaudi 3 is stacking up against others that you, that you offer? So we, like, um, we try to focus on the workloads that customers really want in the market for AI. So inferencing, training, fine tuning, distributed fine tuning, and that's all like in the partnership with Metrum, with Scene. The team has worked like uh, bringing up that software stack, deploying those applications. Uh, but those are some of the numbers, like you know, on tokens per second uh, is one aspect just for AI. But at the same time, we can see, okay, CPU utilization, GPU, like memory utilization and things like that. Um, and when we compare those with the other vendors, uh, those are, we are trying to build up up to the same level so that we can have apples to apple comparison. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it's public knowledge, like, you know, Gaudi 3, in the market is introduced at a lesser price point than the competitors. So ultimately it does impact the cost story overall TCO. Now it's always valid to mm -hmm. test at the component level and you can go down to, you know, to a level of disaggregation to where you're testing a DIM, you know, just the memory mod module itself. Mm -hmm. And then from there you build up into higher stack. Steam, from your perspective, how relevant is it to test just the server versus the entire rack scale architecture. Should we be looking for what these entire rack solutions end up developing over time? Will that be another data point that's important? It's, a, it's an incredibly important data point as you scale out and we can't not talk about it at Supercomputes. I think once you scale things out, the, the, the worst case scenario is you become constrained on your network or you'd be constrained on your storage because the most expensive component are these AI accelerators or these GPU. And so, you know, my long time at Intel, they taught me it's the it's the the half a billion dollar lithography equipment that we need to make sure is the bottleneck, you know, not the two million dollar, you know, tester on the back end test, right? right? That's you know, you know, ec you know, economics 101. It's also manufacturing throughput 101. And I think um, as you scale these clusters up. As you do more complex, you know, distributed inferencing or training tasks or fine tuning tasks, you absolutely need to think about that arch architecture as well. We're, we're going to be, uh, we actually just rolled out a blog on enabling uh, Gaudi 3 with RDMA over converged Ethernet. Like that's basic blocking and tackling. You get dramatic performance and, you know, improvements when you go do the work on the Ethernet as well. So networking is your first, you know, intro into a bottleneck. And, you know, you got to move around a lot of data when you do massive clusters and, you know, storage in certain scenarios when you're sharing model weights as well, in addition to network is going to be a, a bottleneck as well. So you, you really have to think through that. And, you know, it would be a it would be a shame if you buy all these fantastic AI accelerators and, and your, your bottleneck somewhere else, um, you know, in that cluster. Yeah, ch chasing bottlenecks is part of the fun of IT. It's like a game of whack-a-mole forever. Um, Manya, what's the what's the target market for XE9680 in general? Um, can we even think of it that way? Are we sort of waiting to see what the market demands? Are we imagining like three or four of these systems in a rack in an on-premises data center for an enterprise client doing things? Or is this primarily a sort of cloud scale play or what, what, what does I mean, it look like? Do we see, know yet? It's it's AI era, we all know that. So targeting all the customers like both enterprise and cloud, like um, depending on their use cases, what they want to do. Um, I believe it's not like limited to some set of customers. 
Uh, it has the capability with XC96 AD, you can scale up or be on on prem or it can be on cloud. You can do things with it. So, um, but one thing to keep in mind, like specific point I want to mention that um, there is, you know, all the supply chain issues that are happening. Uh, this is a good opportunity to like go ahead with Gaudi 3 and start some development work for the customers. Yeah, it's a good point. Um, so that also brings it into perspective that, okay, if they want to start something on, on prem right now, and they can go ahead and do that. And what about this idea that if 80% of infrastructure spend globally is on training now, at some point that's going to flip in the direction of inference. Um, and again, don't quote me on those exact stats, but the general feeling that we're doing a lot of training now, we're going to be doing a lot more inferencing later. Do these systems land on premises? Is is this a is this confirmation of hybridity? Yeah, I think. Uh, well, I mean, first, I think your point is is very valid. We're we're at this kind of. It's hard to tell when training and inference are going to flip, but what I will say is as more AI applications get adopted, there's definitely more inference workload and cost does matter. And you've seen the leading AI research labs move to smaller models as well to drive that affordability. So once they get massive scale, they want to drive affordability. The other things uh, that are going on too is when you implement like more of a chain of thought reasoning structure, which actually we're demoing live right now on Gaudi 3 below, chain of thought reasoning, and you give the agent access to think, and access to a few APIs, that actually dramatically in increases the amount of inferences that are going on because it's no longer a human, you know, in a chatbot driving the inference. Like this agent is actually having to think independently and reason through steps. And so that dramatically increases the amount of inference. And I think, you know, a lot of people are gonna have the tough conversation of like, where do I want my, my IP to sit? Where do I want my critical thinking to sit? You know, and what is the best, you know, TCO story? Um, and, you know, there's a lot of value in cloud, you know, hands off. And then there's a lot of value. in if you think you've got proprietary IP, proprietary workflows, you know, and a good TCO story, maybe you want to go on prem, you know, both on the on the fine tuning, you know, and the inference per component as well. Manya, final minute. Any any uh, any other thoughts on what you've seen so far with Gaudi? I mean, uh, I'll say it's just starting, like keep an eye out. So like I said, it will be available to all customers in December, targeting around that time frame. And then uh, Gaudi 3 will also be coming in the PCIe form factor. Okay. And that's like around mid next year uh, with the XE offering. So, and also with Intel Granite Rapids, the next gen CPUs. So it's a good like, story from Intel perspective, we have both CPU and an accelerator from their side. So yeah, keep an yeah. eye out for that server. Fantastic. Thanks to both of you. I don't think it can be overstated how important it is that Dell Technologies as an organization is supporting choice moving forward in this marketplace. All sorts of pressure comes to bear from a variety of directions in these industries. And Dell is always held firm with the idea that customer choice is first and foremost, and they're continuing to do that. Great discussion about Intel Gaudi 3. Thanks to both of you. For 6.5 on the Road, I'm Dave Nicholson. Stay tuned for more content.